to stand up tall and proud. I want you to speak up clear and loud, bright. In a world overrun with the fake, delusional, and disingenuous, he stands as a beacon of truth. He is Abuki Cabal. Listening to a Buki Cabal. Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's going on, everybody? Um, I guess uh, this will be part two of um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, my last show uh, concerning um, sexless marriages um, and how. Uh, many of them are out there. Um, you might not even think about sexless marriages, uh, when you're thinking about getting married or, uh, any of that, but it happens and, uh, it's a lot more prevalent than you, than you might think. Um, when we see, or, uh, uh you know, all the shows out here where we're talking about, we hear women talking about what they what they uh, deem to be uh, excessive in a relationship. And, you know, when their uh, uh, sex is something that they talk about time and time again uh, as being something that they, you know, pretty much shouldn't have to do um, as, as if uh, they're supposed to be able to have a relationship with a man without, you know, uh, sex being a, a, an important part of that relationship. So, um, I'm going to uh, cover a few things that are going to give you uh, some, some perspectives on um, how this affects uh, people in their relationships. And this this affects women as well as men. Um, I found uh, quite a few women uh, on here who are, are in sexless marriages as well. And um, that kind of blew me away. It, 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 uh, most of the time when you hear about it, you hear about it from a man's perspective. But. Uh, apparently, um, it goes both ways. Um, so, uh, let's get on with it. Okay. This is a, a Reddit that I'm on called dead bedrooms. And, um, there are a number of people on here who, uh, tell their stories. If you, if you, uh, aren't on it, you know, if you're interested in this, this topic, um, it is a uh, very insightful, uh, with regard to, um, trying to find out how this affects people in their relationships. Uh, uh, they tell their stories from their perspectives. Um, even, uh, their attempts to, um, to undergo counseling and whatnot. And, um, it's, it's very interesting, but I'm going to, I'm going to share a few of these with me, uh, with you and, uh, see what you guys think. Um, okay, let me cue it up. Here we go. 
Those of you who think that sex isn't really that important for your relationship are fooling yourselves. Rarely is it ever both mutually agreed to take it off the table. Although you may be content, I can assure you that if you have a loving partner who adores and respects you, that they're suffering in silence, immensely. If sex is just something that you can't really bring yourself to do anymore, at least for your partner's sake, if you say that you still truly love them, don't starve them of affection, too. They need more than words, they need action behind them. Don't stop with the little things, like a hand across the small of their back. Surprising them now and again with a hug from behind that ends in a kiss, date nights and other gestures that reinforce your love. And I don't mean just reinforcing that you love them, but gestures that reinforce the love and intimate, emotional connection for your relationship. I am not necessarily advocating for anyone to force themselves to do something that they aren't comfortable with. But I am advocating for you to reconsider how you are making an effort to keep love alive. Sex and intimate touching isn't always about physical gratification I have learned and learned the hard way, I might add. For a lot of people, it's about being allowed to physically, spiritually show you their love for you and gratitude for having you share your life with them. For a lot of people, it's also a part of building and maintaining that life, the one they have chosen to have with you. They need to feel that from you, too. Not being allowed to show love in that way for those of us where physical intimacy is our love language, we end up grieving, especially if all affection has gone away with it on your end. Grief is love with nowhere to go. I am just sharing what it's like to have your love ignored and unreciprocated not just physically, but emotionally as well. I breaks a lot of us. It is earth-shattering to not feel love from the one person who is everything to you. If you think that affection won't end up disappearing just BC sex isn't a thing anymore, it will. First, it will stop being a priority for you after a while, then eventually, for your partner, but long, long after you have forgotten about making it important BC your partner loves you and can't imagine their life without you. And BC they know that you love them, they hold on to hope that things will go back to how they were BC surely. If they matter to you, you will eventually make the effort, right? Again, actions speak louder than words. For the love of your life, for the sake of what you have built together, don't stop putting in effort, too. Do it, pun probably intended here, not BC you're afraid they'll leave. BC most still don't, even though they find themselves carrying their heavy heart alone. And don't do it like it's something to check off a list. But do it BC you genuinely love your partner. Okay. Um, as you can hear uh, from that that reading, you know this was was pretty painful for that individual. Now, uh, you know, uh, from a man's perspective, now I mean, a lot of things that we talk about uh, in the manosphere uh, with regard to us providing. Now, imagine yourself providing um, fully um, for uh, a woman who uh, refuses to um, to have sex with you. Uh, and the and the pain described uh, in this description here. Um, but time and time again, when 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 our pain is uh, is described, um, it's uh, the responses that we get are are um, without empathy, um, without any. Uh, sort of, of uh, remorse or or kindness uh, towards uh, us as men. Our only jobs are to basically provide and basically um, be handed sexual favors when it is uh, uh, convenient for them. So, um, like I said, if if you uh, there, there's, I have a few other ones here that I don't have in the, in the, uh, in the description, but here's an, another a response down here where one of them, uh, one of the, uh, the people said, and this is a, a female said, had to share this. Uh, everything you said is exactly how I have been feeling and thinking just recently got out of a dead bedroom situation of four years off and on. I truly feel broken. I was such a sexual person before this past relationship and he has really ruined it for me. I am absolutely terrified to even seek out a new partner because it's been so long since I've even had sex that I am afraid and so nervous. I don't know if I will, ever, if it will ever happen. 
Not to mention, I'm 40 with three kids. I feel like I'll die alone. Okay, so um, that's from a, a woman's perspective, but uh, from a man's perspective too. I mean, it it, uh, it is damaging uh, to a person, especially uh, to a, a male's ego, when uh, he is doing everything that he's supposed to do in that relationship and finds himself being neglected and turned away for uh, for something that um, uh, your significant other should want from you, should desire from you. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to take a look at another one here. And, uh, I added this in the other one, but, uh, this is, um, the statement that I read at the, at the end of the other one where it, t it talks about, it says to all men who are about to get married, be aware that you are marrying a much different kind of woman than your father or your grandfather married. You are marrying a woman who will not be accountable to you for her actions or words or where she's, where she goes or who she sees. You are marrying an equivalent life partner who is entitled to each and everything that you are entitled to. Sometimes she she's the husband and you're the wife. Oh, and sometimes she's the wife and you are the husband. Of course, she will never call you that. But her actions and her responses or lack thereof will ultimately define when you are wearing the panties. <clears throat> and that is true. That is so true. Um. Okay, here's another one where um, uh, from Dead Bedrooms, this was a while back uh, when LL spouses uh, spouses spouse initiates. It just depressed me because I feel like she's doing it out of obligation after years of incompatibility talks. Okay, it says my wife is LL reactive libido, so low libido. Uh, I have a high spontaneous drive. It's been probably eight years since she first told me she had never been aroused by looking at me and never craved sex. Since then, we had lots of ups and downs in trying to find stability in our sex lives together. But my self-esteem has been permanently fucked up <laughs> or fucked by uh, that initial shock and the subsequent times in which she's confirmed that she could probably go indefinitely without sex if I didn't need it. And that seeing sexual pics uh, or sexual videos of me uh, do nothing for her. Okay. You can imagine how that would, uh, would make you feel. I mean, that is, as men, we are visual creatures. So, um, you know, we're stimulated by, by looking uh, at our partners uh, and uh, by our initial un, initial attraction is is powerful from a visual perspective. OK, for years we've had. A monthly I'm sad our sex life isn't enough for me talk talks because I get depressed if we go more than a week without sex. She loses track and doesn't notice until I'm depressed and then. Uh, when she initiate, it just makes me feel more depressed because I know she's just doing it out of obligation and not because she desires me. It becomes a cycle of talk, uh, half a week, full week of decent frequency. She forgets, loses motivation, infrequent repeat. Uh, for years, I've done a lot of reading and put in a lot of effort in learning her libido managing her love languages. I'm very much a romantic read, uh, comes as you are and done my best to handle removing all of her stressors. So all of that, that means that basically he's cleaning the house and he's, you know, he's basically doing everything to make her life even more, you know, even easier, uh, uh, than, uh, than it, it is with him being in, in her life as a, you know, as her husband in the first place. Um, so that goes into that, that new age wife thing, um, that, you know, it's that princess mentality where, 
Um, everything has to be super, super easy for me. And if any kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of stressors come up, then it's just too much for me. And I, I, I can't have sex with you. I can't, you know, uh, I can't really even look at you. I can't, you know, can't have a, a, a conversation with you. So you, you as a man have no outlet for your stress. You have no, uh, you have no support system for your stress, uh, with this type of, uh, of, of, of woman. So, uh, let's move on here. Um, okay. Throughout the process, she could barely be bothered to read a chapter or two of any of those, uh, in between our talks, she doesn't even put any thought into our sex lives or incompatibility problems. I tried to find things that may actually turn her on and she just isn't interested, which is fine. It's just demoralizing because sexuality is a big part of my life and I just want to mutual mutually experience it with her as my wife. Now that's really, um, to me, you know, that that's really, uh, um, uh, stressful to just hear that, to hear all of the effort that he's put into trying to, um, to understand her, to make life easier for her. And all he wants is her. And she feels like pretty much take me as I am. And, uh, I am not, uh, I'm not, I shouldn't have to do any more than what I want to do. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. The, uh, the usual things that, that we hear. Okay. Now he has given up his entire life, uh, to basically provide security, uh, and, and, uh, a home, I'm sure, you know, um, he's made her life easy by his own admission. But, um, the one thing that, uh, men need, and it's not a want, it's a need. It's covered under, under Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, yet this is the, the power play that, that a, a lot of women use. And that is to, to deny you sex. Okay, so the last part of it is uh, we've got to the point to where even when she's staying on top of initiating, I just feel like shit because I know she's forced forcing herself. She tries to say she wants to because she wants to make me feel good. But I know that just means she just doesn't want me to get depressed. Unfortunately, I'm just finally at a point where I've realized we simply have no chemistry. Uh, I need passion. I need to feel sexy. I feel, uh, and, uh, feel lusted after feel like sex is mutually desired between the two of us. Uh, the frequency doesn't fix that on the periods. Uh, she makes the effort. I put effort into making sure I'm fit and attractive. But anytime I've tried to do sexy things, send flirty pictures or make sexual videos for her, she just likes, oh, cool, thanks. She doesn't know how to flirt and never learned how to be provocative because it's simply not a drive for her. So there's just not a whole lot of work with not a lot, not a whole lot to work with to make me feel excited anymore. I still find her attractive, but she's gained a substantial amount of weight, uh, twice the weight as when we started dating and the lack of chemistry between us really affects my ability to even orgasm when we have sex. I don't know what to do anymore. There's nothing more uh, for me to say uh, to her after exhaustingly communicating the subject to death for eight years. We're compatible sexually. I love her deeply. I'm with her for life, but this is just very depressing. Uh, see, so he says that in the men in the end that we're compatible. We're, no, we're incompatible uh, sexually. Okay. I read that wrong. Yeah. We're incompatible sexually. So guys, if you find yourself in a situation like this and, and the ladies, you know, the, the woman's beautiful, everything is great except for the sex. You might as well go ahead and pass her on by. Because if everything else is is great except for the sex, then it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. You know, society and these these fruity stories out here tell you 
that, you know, uh, love will make a way and all these other things. And that's just that's just that's that's bogus. You know, do not fall for this Disney crap. Um, You know, sex is something that we need for us as men. Uh, he described in here how uh, the desire, the, the 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 wanting to be lusted after, you know, you just think of yourself, think of in your mind, you know, the um, the <laughs> uh, the type of woman, you're perfect, you know, type of woman sexually, you know, and then imagine yourself living with something less than that, maybe 25 percent of that. When you know that 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 woman is out there, that woman's out there, she's out there somewhere, you know, but this one right here that you set your sights on that you went ahead and said, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and take this one. That's what you're stuck with. And basically it'll wear you down over time, emotionally, physically, you know, to the point to where, you know, you find yourself hating uh, yourself and the person that you're in a relationship with. It just feels like a dead end. And that's what this that's what this is describing. Um, Okay, Uh, I'm going to go back to um, this other article here. And I'm going to cue this one up for you. Okay. And this one uh, was in GQ. And uh, cue that up and then we'll take a listen to this one. Here we go. How to move forward when you're in a sexless marriage. What makes a sexless marriage so damaging? Sex is often a very important component of intimacy. And we all seek out intimacy in different ways. For some of us, emotional intimacy is more important than physical intimacy, or cuddling is more important than penetration. When it comes to a relationship, having shared forms of intimacy is really important. Often, in couples that come to me, one person says, but I'm fine, everything's fine. And the other person says, how can you say that? This is anything but fine. That's where it starts to impact other parts of the relationship. If one person is missing the intimacy that's important to them, they can start to be resentful or frustrated. Or the person who doesn't want to have sex can start to feel guilty or broken. So, you could have a sexless marriage and still believe you have a good marriage? Yes, exactly. You can have a sexless marriage and have a happy marriage. You also don't have to have sex to make it a marriage. Right. Some people, including those who are asexual, might be completely fine not having any sex. Yes, if one partner is asexual, doesn't feel sexually attracted to anyone, or has low or absent interest in or desire for sexual activity, this could absolutely play a role in a marriage being or becoming sexless. For someone who already knows they are asexual, choosing who does not require sex to be part of a satisfying relationship, or who is more invested in the emotional or other aspects of the relationship, can work very well. For someone who only discovers once in the marriage that they are asexual, discovering this identity can provide a lot of relief to both the person who identifies as ace, asexual, as well as their partner. The tension around the ace partner not wanting sex suddenly has a reason that is not related to the relationship itself. What are some of the common causes of sexless marriages? There are usually two big reasons. One, there's a desire mismatch, just like how people like to eat different amounts. What can often happen with that mismatch is that the person who desires sex more asks and initiates. When the other person says no, they start to feel rejected. And no one wants to feel rejected, so they slowly stop asking. That's very common. The other thing that also happens is that you have some sort of life milestone that makes sex difficult. Maybe you have kids, who are taking more of your time and attention. Maybe you got laid off at work. There are also things like health crises, and maybe you didn't have sex during that period. Or maybe you have pain during sex. Are there okay. situations that cannot be... F- okay, hold on, guys. This, this looks like it's not going right. So let me do this. Let me 
queue it up again and let's start over. Here we go. How to move forward when you're in a sexless marriage. What makes a sexless marriage so damaging? Bear with me, guys. Okay. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Well, let me read this one to you. <laughs> All righty. Um, how to move forward when you're in a sexless marriage. Uh, recently, a 36-year-old man posted something stupid on Reddit. Uh, this is not breaking news. This happens uh, likely thousands of times per day. But the post made it over to Twitter and people went in. Uh, the issue at hand the guy hated his wife's haircut while he knew uh, he couldn't tell tell her not to go, not to get her haircut. He admitted, I know it sounds stupid, but every trip back to the hairdresser feels like a little slap in the face. How the husband mentioned one small detail that got everyone's attention. He and his wife do not have sex. Redditors mostly provided uncharacteristically astute commentary. I don't think this is about her hair. The haircut is just a tangible thing that you are focusing on. Your main issue is the lack of sex, one user wrote. Reddit has a long has long been a sanctuary for people in sexless marriages. There's a whole subreddit uh, with 182,000 plus subscribers called Dead Bedrooms where people go to complain, uh, commiserate, and seek help for their relationships. There is no official demarcation of what makes a marriage sexless, but studies usually uh, count couples who haven't had sex in the last year or marriages where intimacy happens 10 times or fewer a year. The subreddit's top post of all time is the story of a person with a low libido dubbed LL on the site trying to initiate sex with their partner. The poster triumphantly explains their realization after initiating sex uh, the night before my husband's mood today is fantastic. I'm realizing how much his joy is missing in a sexless marriage. I will keep reading here and working on my end of initiating. For most posters, that's the ultimate fantasy that their partner finally understands just how important sex really is to them, and more importantly, why. The traditional read heteronormative and sexist narrative, you guys know how much I hate that. Okay is that men are always ready to have sex while women are constantly faking headaches to avoid it. That's simply, that's simply not the case according to Pam Costa, MA uh, in clinical psychology and founder of Down to There, uh, a site devoted to getting people to talk about sex more. Men and women pretty much 
experience low sex drive equally. Costa asserts that while sex can feel excuse me, easier at the beginning, after a few years with someone, the in love hormones fade. Sex can start to become less frequent as couples encounter road bumps like depression, physical health concerns, the loss of loved ones, pregnancy, childbirth, and miscarriages, or as a result of mismatched desire levels. But sometimes the problem is simply that people don't know how to talk about the sex that they want to be having. Or no matter the reason, Costa says, that honest communication about sex can help. We asked Costa our biggest question about sexless marriages and how to address them. How common are sexless marriages? Uh, the accepted rate is somewhere between 10 and 20 percent of marriages. I consider that pretty common. One of the first things I want people to know if they're in a sexless marriage is that they're not alone. They're in good company. It's very common. Are men and women equally concerned about sexless marriages? Absolutely, she says. I think it's harder when male partners a partner has lower desire because we do have this cultural narrative that men should always be ready because of this in a hetero relationship. There can be additional shame when it is the male partner who has a lower sex drive. But again, you're not alone. What makes a sexless marriage so damaging? Sex is often a very important uh, component of intimacy, and we all seek out intimacy in different ways. For some of us, emotional in intimacy is more important than physical intimacy or cuddling is more important than penetration. When it comes to a, a relationship, having shared forms of intimacy is really important. Often in couples that come to me, one person says, but I'm fine. Everything's fine. And another person says, how can you say that? This is anything but fine. That's where it starts to impact other, par other parts of the relationship. If one person is missing the intimacy, that's important to them. They can start to be resentful and frustrated. Or the person who doesn't want to have sex can start to feel guilty or broken. And I'm going to say, if that's a reasonable person, um, uh, uh, if you go on and you, the more you read about this, you'll, you'll, you'll hear that, uh, uh, nine times out of 10, the women feel no, no resentment. Uh, they feel no, no guilt, um, uh, about not wanting to have sex. It's, it's your problem. You need to pretty much, uh, simmer down in, in, in their descriptions. Now, um, there is no, um, <laughs> there's no sympathy uh, for us. And, um, when it comes down to it, it's basically, uh, I, you know, just because I'm not having sex with you doesn't mean that you should be able to go out and go cheat. And they feel justified in, in thinking that and saying that. So let's move on. So you could have a sexless marriage and still believe you have a good marriage. Yes, exactly. You can have a sexless marriage and have a happy marriage. You also don't have to have sex to make it a marriage. That is complete and utter bullshit. And I don't know how she can even uh, uh, <laughs> be a, 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 psych a, psych <laughs> a psychological uh, professional uh, advocating for people to have sexless marriages. I mean, no, it's, it's just not a thing. You know, um, it's going to be important to one or the other, if not both. And I feel like that is just uh, that's irresponsible. Um but uh, we're we're hearing more and more irresponsible things from certain um, members of of the uh, um, the psychology uh, field uh, as of late. Um, there are a lot of, of women who who are saying some some really crazy things. So uh, let's move on here. Uh, right. Some people, including those who are asexual, might be completely not having any sex completely fine not having any sex. Okay, well, if you're completely fine not having any sex, then you should be completely fine not being in a relationship. You know, um, and I think another thing that's not being covered here is that, you know, the subterfuge that takes place for them to be able to get into a relationship to uh, to have that other person um, um, 
uh, sacrificing and giving up um, so much of themselves to to uh, to what they think is is a, a a whole complete marriage, and it's not because this person had no intention of having sex with this person the way that this person needed to to uh, to be engaged uh, sexually. So, okay, let's move on. Yes, if one partner is asexual and uh, in parentheses doesn't feel sexually attracted to anyone or has low or absent interest in or desire for sexual activity, this could absolutely play a role in a marriage being or becoming sexless. For someone who already knows they are asexual choosing, who does not require sex to be a part of a satisfying relationship, or who is more invested in the emotional or other aspects of the relationship, can work very well. <sighs> For someone who only discovers once in the marriage that they are asexual, discovering the identity can provide a lot of relief to both persons who identify as asexual as well as their partner. The tense, the tension surrounding or tension around the ace partner not wanting sex suddenly has a reason that is not related to the relationship itself. OK, no, that's not going to give me any uh, any uh, <laughs> any resolution. You know, what's going to give me resolution is getting out of that relationship. And getting rid of that person because that person is basically mooching and leeching off of you uh, and, and not giving anything in return. I mean, the currency of, of, of marriage and relationships is sex and intimacy. And if you are unable to to to, to do that, then uh, no one uh, is going to be interested in, in, in that. I mean, we approach people based off of sexual attraction uh, and the belief that we're going to be engaged in incredible sex with these people. No one approaches a person uh, off of anything that is not sex based. But society would have you believe that that's not the case. But we know through years, decades of science, why we move the way we move. And it is based on procreate, procreation, sexual attraction and the perpetuation of the species above everything else. Okay. All right. What are some of the common causes of sexless marriages? There are usually two big reasons. One, there's a desire mismatch, just like how people like to eat different amounts. Uh, what can often happen with the mismatch is that the person who desires sex more ask and initiate. When the other person says no, they start to feel rejected and no one wants to feel rejected. So they slowly stop asking. And that's very common. The other thing that also happens is that you have some sort of life milestone that makes sex difficult. Maybe you have kids uh, who are taking more of your time and attention. Maybe you got laid off from work. There are also things like health crisis and maybe you didn't have sex during that period or maybe you have pain during sex. OK. All right. Well, um, there's only one thing that I found that that was was probably uh, a good reason and that is painful sex. The rest of that is just excuses because you know that that sex is a requirement in your relationship. If you can't provide sex, you need to get your shit and you need to get out of there. Sorry. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I just all of that's just bogus to me. I don't understand how people um, can um, not tell people the truth regarding uh, the difficulty that they're going to going to face when they're not having sex with their significant other. And, and I find that, yes, uh, I, I hear this more from men than I do from women. Um, I do hear it from women, um, but I hear it a lot more from men because um, these, these women are, are, you know, brought up to think that sex is a, is a, a nasty thing. It's a, it's a thing that, you know, all these men want from us is sex and, you know, and, and now you hear them on, on, you know, all these shows and they, they say, well, Hey, um, I'm going to get all of these things and I'm not going to have sex with anybody. So they are practicing, 
uh, and perfecting uh, their techniques uh, by getting things, getting all the treats and the goodies without uh, performing any sex uh, uh, with anybody at all or having any kind of sexual attraction or, or, or uh, engagement with anyone. And that's unhealthy and it's going to cause major problems. OK. Are there situations that cannot be fixed? Couples whose sexual desire are simply too incompatible. What do you do then? Yes, which I or this is God, these people need to really edit these things. Yes, which is why I encourage couples to review their sexual history together. What peak sexual experiences have you had or have you never had any? That way you can learn more about what you need to have uh, sex that you uh, that you enjoy. When you can do that and not from a pressurized uh, standpoint of you have to provide that for me, but from a standpoint of, wow, when we're on vacation in Hawaii and we had sex in, in a bathroom, that was really a turn on for me because it was spontaneous and that really helped when you can ask what are the are other ways that we can bring spont spontaneity into our sex life. That's a really good thing to learn about for yourself. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, it just sounds so sanitized and, you know, and, and just it just sounds make believeish, you know, um, you can initiate, you can try to be spont uh, spont spontaneous, you can try to do all these things and, and, and still be rejected. So um, where is is the um, the meaningful um, advocacy uh, for the person who's suffering in this uh, in this relationship? I, I don't see it uh, from this this clinician. Um, OK, let's move on. When you are able to actually start having those diff difficult conversations more uh, from a curious angle than from a pressure angle, you can start to see whether or not there's enough overlap between that, uh, between what the two of you desire to make it work. OK. OK, so then I'm going to go back to this. That that sounds great for a reasonable individual. You know, somebody who is is not going to take offense to you asking them questions all the time, you know, or you might have an individual like. Um, most black women who will say, well, I'm tired of talking about this. We talked about this last week. We talked about this last month. I thought we were done talking about this. So when you got a person like that, what are you supposed to do, Doc? OK, so certainly I work with couples who do that and realize we're not enough for an overlap. Does that mean we need to separate? Does that mean we need to be creative about how we get our intimate, intimate needs met? Or do we need to go outside of this relationship? And who talks like that? I mean, what what person, you know, tells their, <laughs> tells their doc, well, hey, uh, do I need to just get creative? Do I need to? You know, do I need to mas you know, masturbate? Do I need to do I need to give me a side chick? I mean, no, who who talks like that? You know, maybe some people would, would say all of that. But if you can't talk to your significant other, what makes you think that they're going to say all of that in front of their significant other when they're having this this couple's counseling with this with this this clinician? OK. All right. So how should partners communicate about desire? discrepancies. When I work with couples with desired discrepancies, what we often figure out is that one of the things often underlying uh, that is I'm not getting the type of sex I that I want in order to desire it. If you're the partner who has a higher sex, higher desire relative to your partner, and these are probably the two people who are going to be most uh, distressed by a sexless marriage, I think a little bit of introspection is usually helpful to acknowledge that maybe the reason you guys stop having sex uh, is that your partner stopped getting what they needed to desire sex. OK, 
okay. This can happen for a lot of reasons. In being hormones make it easier, so we think we don't have to try harder. There's also a lack of sex education. Sometimes someone hasn't learned about their own desire or how to give a partner pleasure. That's true. Sometimes there's also an uh, effort problem. These, these, uh, a lot of times they, you know, I, I find and I, I tell women a lot of times that basically you say that you and, you know, and your boyfriend, your husband are having great sex. Uh, but did he tell you you're having great sex or is that what you're telling him that this is some great sex that I'm giving you, you know, because in her mind, what she thinks is great sex might just be average sex or it could just be garbage sex. And he's taking it because he likes everything else about you and he's dealing with the rest of it and going out and, and basically um, supplementing uh, his sexual desires from from people who are are better at it. You know, I find that that is is a lot more of what's going on out here. You have uh, a women who just don't want to put in the work to to try to find out what men want, what men like. Uh, they, they have hangups about how they present themselves. Um, you know, one of the, <laughs> one of the, the main things that you used to get, you know, you, you say certain things to a, to a, a, a girl that you were talking to or a woman that you're talking to, you'd be like, Hey, I want you to do this, this, and this. And she'll be like, look, I'm not doing that. I'm not no hoe, you know? <laughs> so then there's a hangup, you know, you're hung up right there. I mean, there's, you, you can't even, re- you know, relax enough for you to even be able to do things that are, you know, spontaneous and exciting and deal with fantasy, you know, um, you'll be surprised what, uh, what women say that they want and what they actually fantasize about later on. I'm going to do a show on that as well. Um, and it will, it's probably going to piss off a lot of, a lot of feminists, uh, because uh, this is the very thing that they say that women uh, don't engage in. And that is um, the uh, grape fantasies. Uh, it is there's there's been a lot of stud- studies on it. And it is a thing, you know, uh, this is this is a common uh, um, fantasy uh, that women have uh, yet. Um, we're being told that we should be nice guys and we should basically not have any aggressive tendencies and all of that, you know, which is, is totally counter to what, you know, what, what these, these women fantasize about. So there again, there's a disconnect, you know, but, uh, let's move on here. Okay. All right. Or maybe, they weren't taught about how to talk about sex. So maybe they lack the skills to communicate with their partner about what they desire. Maybe if I'm the higher desire partner, I never learned how to ask a partner what they want and create an opportunity for them to provide feedback. Okay. I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about anytime you see a sex scene, say, um, in any movie that they say women like, you know, uh, what's the movie with, uh, you know, uh, Olivia Pope. Okay. Did he ever ask her, Hey, Olivia, you know, can you let's have sex? You know, it wasn't like that. He just pushed her in a server room and took it. Okay. Every single time, you know, how many, I mean, how many, how much, you know, you hear about this, especially working around women, how much they talked about how, how this turned them on and how you would just overhear, you know, um, you know, conversations about, you know, the, the engagement that she and the president had, it was, it was over the top. But then when you look at, you know, shows about us, it's a total different standard. You know, you look at some of these other, uh, other shows that are, that are, uh, you know, dealing with black couples and whatnot. It's a whole different, different deal. You know, okay. You look at, at, at some of the shows that are, that are, um, are, 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 you know, in the mix right now, you look at, you know, P Valley and all these other ones, all of the sexual uh, acts in there are not your usual uh, sexual engagements. And they are definitely not uh, 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 in the tone of this article, I'll say. 
Okay. Uh, what's the step, the first step, of course, correcting uh, a sexless marriage? When someone comes to me uh, in a sexless marriage wanting to have more sex, there are four steps that I go through with them. I Number one, know that you're not alone. Number two, seek support. Talk to your friends about it uh, or find a coach or a therapist. Read a book. I recommend come as you are. OK. All right. First of all, for black folks, you know, we are taught to keep our business to ourselves. So rarely do we talk to anyone about our issues, our our um, our, our uh, psychological issues, none of that. And we definitely wouldn't be going and tell anybody that we're not, you know, that we're in, in a sexless marriage. I mean, you, you, you find some, some, uh, um, uh, cases where people will, you know, go ahead and talk about it, you know, um, but nine times out of 10, we're told to keep our stuff, uh, to ourselves. And that's why, I think that we have a lot of the problems that we have with uh, with with uh, suicide rates and with um, our divorce rates and all these other things, because we don't have the skills to work out any of these problems, nor will we go out and seek out people who will help us with these problems. And now we have you know, black female psychologists who are saying that basically, you know, they hate us while supposedly trying to help us with our psychological issues. So this is going to put another bump in the road uh, regarding us seeking help from people who are uh, are like us, who look like us, who are supposed to be able to um, to um, understand our perspective on the problems that we discuss. OK, uh, number three, speak up another part of seek support. Uh, if you want to bring this up with your partner. Uh, speak up lovingly about why sex is important to you because otherwise they don't know. I don't believe that. I don't believe that we're all adults and everybody knows how much sex is important to, uh, because that's what brings us together. Sex is obviously important and it's never going to not be important. So if you think that you can, you know, you can act as if, you know, sex is no longer important. And just because you're having kids and all of that, just because look, all of that stuff does not give you a pass on still being having sex with your, with, with your significant other, you know, um, there, are, there are other women out here who don't miss a beat, even though they got kids don't miss a beat, you know, have sex in the closet, in the bathroom, uh, anywhere they can possibly uh, muster it in between taking care of those kids. But then there are other ones out here. I'm too tired. Well, if you want to work, you want to get out there and you want to work, you want to have all these, you know, you want to be this modern woman, then guess what? You still going to have to keep up with the other aspect of it, which is coming home and having sex. Men don't go out there and work their asses off and then come home and say, oh, you know, I'm just too tired. I'm too tired to have sex. Uh, that's the last thing on my mind. No, that's not the last thing on our mind. That's the first thing on our mind. And if we ain't getting it at home, more than likely you're going to get it from someplace else. And where are you going to uh, going to meet these people? where you are the most, and that's probably on the job. Okay. So if you're around women who are basically finding you attractive and then your wife at home, who you're doing everything for, doesn't find you attractive. How long you think that's going to, that's going to last before you go ahead and you take one of them up on it because you know, life and time waits for no one. You know, uh, if you find yourself in a relationship where you, your significant other, your, your wife is telling you, well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm premenopausal. Uh, 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 wait, wait, wait. You know what? You might be waiting up until to your, your last breath. Time waits for no one. Tomorrow is not promised. Okay. All right. Okay. And so that lovingly crap and acting like she doesn't know that that's all bull crap. Okay. So the script I usually encourage goes something like this. Hey, this relationship is important to me. You are important to me. And intimacy in this relationship is important to me. I care about us and I want to work on improving our intimacy. Okay. That's what she advocates for you guys to basically go to your wife and tell her, you know, and she's going to be receptive and say, oh, a light just went off in my head and it's all going to be fixed now. I'm going to have sex with you. Come on, man. Come on. 
you know, I, I, I'm just want to advocate for a more realistic approach. I mean, GQ is a men's magazine. OK. And we got this lady in here giving this type of advice. Which doesn't even sound realistic. Um, half the time you can't get women to even listen to you on things that are important or uh, <laughs> or that mean anything to you. They, they think those things are just something that you just, you know, a quirk you've got in your head. But you're supposed to go to them with this script thing that she gives you. And then she's supposed to just understand. Well, I don't think that's the case. But number four, ask what's important to them, because maybe sex isn't important to them, but something else is better. Communication, help around the house or mental health. So see what I'm saying? There's always you. You should pick up a broom. You should you should do something for them. And see, there's there's another aspect to this where, you know, you find yourself um, doing favors for sex. You know, it's like a, a sanitized, sanitized prostitution. If you cut the grass, I'll give you some sex. If you wash the dishes, I'll give you some sex. You know, they don't give you sex because they want to or because they desire you. It's because they want you to do something for them. They want you to fix something. OK. OK. And here's the last part of it. What happens after you first bring this up? What's the work that has to be done? I think it's important when talking about sexless marriages to realize that the idea of going from no sex to uh, to the classic script that we have around sex might be a bit of a stretch. If you're a hetero cis couple. And why are, are we using hetero cis couple in a magazine that is a heterosexual magazine? You know, this is, you know, why, I mean, why is it necessary to continue to throw these, these terms around in a community that does not need these terms flashed around to them, you know, pisses me off. Anyway, you might need to expand your definition of sex outside of penis and vagina. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't need to do that because that doesn't concern me. If I'm, if I'm not interested in, in anus, then I shouldn't have to to, uh, to in, 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 you know, uh, expand my horizons into monkey poxdom. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, or beyond orgasm, throw away the myth that you have to finish. What? Now she's advocating for you not to have an orgasm. Who is this lady? Don't read this lady's work. Don't 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 follow this lady. I would I would suggest you follow someone who is more realistic. Uh, with regard to sex and and uh, meaningful sexual interaction. Um, and, and I'm going to go on and I'm going to finish this uh, because that's a lot of pressure. When I have couples who are trying to go from sexless marriage to a marriage where they are having sex again, expanding that definition of sex is really helpful. OK, yeah, this was this was very. Um, very frustrating. Um but I, I, I hope you guys found that to be somewhat um, entertaining and uh, insightful. Uh, but that's just uh, one aspect of it. I'm going to do one more show on this and I'm going to finish this up. So it'll be a part three. Um, you guys tell me what you uh, what you think in the comments. Um, I apologize for my my reader. Um, it failed me. Um, but I am going to, uh, for the sake of time, just go ahead and uh, and crank this one out for you guys. Um, don't want to go through the time of editing that out. Sorry. Um, my time is kind of limited. But on to the next one. Thank you guys for following. Uh, and uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, my goal is 2,000. Um, by the end of next month, if you guys could help me out with that, I would appreciate it. And I will try to continue to crank out um, um, good content for you guys. If you have any ideas or anything that you'd like for me to uh, to cover, I'd be more than happy to uh, to do that. Um, appreciate you guys.